Wargaming have made a ton of overpowered tanks within World of Tanks and I'm guaranteeing you that this probably isn't on your list. But in today's video, I'm going to show you why everyone should fear this vehicle. And it's because whether you're a top tier vehicle, you're a light tank, a tank destroyer, a heavy tank or an overpowered vehicle, it doesn't matter. This tank is going to be chunking off hundreds of hit points off of you and you're probably not going to be able to spot it and that is exactly what we're showcasing in this insane replay where the Waffle Panzer IV, of course the tier 9 tank destroyer from the German line, is capable of dealing over 12,000 damage and we're going to find out how this player manages to do it and how you may be able to replicate it too. So apparently the player here doesn't like light tanks as the only tanks he's about to hit are of course light tanks. That's three shots of damage for nearly 1,500 in total, making this a very, very nice tank if you can continually reload and because the reload of the Waffle Panzer IV is actually substantially good you're able to reliably kick out that damage and hence why he's been able to pick up 2,000 damage in a game where he's only fired four shells. And that's down to the fact that this tank has perfect accuracy along with the fact that it also gets 276 millimeters of penetration on its standard rounds and of course 352 on its premium meaning that any video vehicle that you come up against at tier 9 or higher is capable of being one hit and that means that every single tank that you will meet in the game is capable of being penned by it and if you can use this tank in the correct scenario whereby you're using the camo which is what we're showcasing today how it can become almost impossible for enemy tanks to deal with you and why that this is a super super underrated super good vehicle that could be borderline overpowered. Now, I would never say for the Waffle Panzer IV to be nerfed, but in the right hands, this tank is devastating, and you can see up against the E75, the E75 does not have armor, and he is definitely regretting life choices poking that ridge up against a tank like this, and with the accuracy that the Waffle Panzer IV has. And unfortunately for the AMX M4, he is going to find out that get offering up the side of your vehicle to a Waffle Panzer IV is going to quickly end up with you back in the garage like you would want, especially when I see these tanks played within the game. Often they are played very badly and that is that people try and trade with these vehicles on corners, they're trying to sit in front of heavy tanks, they're trying to trade with a heavy tank. This tank is the ultimate trader but it's definitely not the ultimate trader on a corner. You want to be sat in bushes where the enemy team have no opportunity to spot you and you're able to just keep reloading, keep sending out damage to the enemy's ways without them even being able to hit you back. And that is why this tank is super dangerous, not only because of the fact that it is able to deal the damage, deal the damage pretty quickly, but also the fact that it doesn't get spotted and that means that the enemies can definitely not hit you unless of course they blind fire. Now the game is looking absolutely terrible, I mean they are down by 5 vehicles and they're down by 2000 hit points currently and that means that the enemy team have got to do some pretty big throwing if they want to lose this game, especially considering the fact that that advantage has now come down to four. But with the T-95, the Scorpion G, the Skoda T-56, some really overpowered vehicles on the enemy team when you're in the late stages of the game, especially considering how many hit points that they have, yeah, I mean, you would expect them to win, especially against the Waffle Panzer IV, that as soon as it's spotted, it's pretty much useless. But of course, you've got to try and spot it. And that doesn't seem to be on the top priority of the enemy team as one of them is in the cap. It's most likely the E75 as he was spotted right by the cap circle just a little while ago and of course is a one shot for basically everyone on the team. But in the Waffle Panzer IV, he's sitting back, he's just waiting for, to see what the opponents are going to be trying to do. He of course is very conscious about the T95 that's in the centre of the map because that is super dangerous and if you leave that unchecked and it loads a HE round for you using intuition and it deals a thousand damage to you, you haven't got that many hit points left remaining to try and carry and oh, it wasn't the E75 in the cap, it was indeed the VK1001P. Now, with that tank having 730 hit points, you've got to either A, Amarak him, or B, set him on fire, or you've got to hit him twice. Hitting him twice obviously being the less favourable option, and unfortunately for the VKP, 
The Waffle Panzer IV does manage to hit him in the cupola, but somehow doesn't pen. Brilliant. Exactly what you want when you're trying to carry in this sort of game. But don't worry, it happens twice and you must be absolutely fuming, bouncing off of the VKP twice. But instead, he now decides to try and hit the turret cheeks. It bounces again. This is a nightmare going on right now. And he's now just trying to get that final shell. Will he actually manage to hit it? Yes, he does. Having bounced three rounds, I would be super triggered with how much time I wasted up against that guy. And unfortunately getting unlucky by the RNG. But now he tries to get undetected so he can deal with all of the four enemy tanks remaining and uh oh the e75 so close but only at the last second seemingly detecting him and yeah the e75 back in the garage meaning that there are now two super low hit point vehicles the t95 being one of them who could quite easily remove the majority of the hit points but he doesn't manage to do it and with just the Skoda T56 left and a TS5 you really do have to prioritize the low health vehicles and uh oh the Skoda T56 exposes that hull armor and yeah the hull armor has no chance up against the premium rounds of this and unfortunately for the TS5 I don't know what he's trying to intend on doing but apparently going side on to the only tank left remaining in the game is the best option and he continues to do it don't know what he was trying here, but unfortunately for the TS5, decides he's going to throw the game and end up back in the garage. As the Waffle Panzer IV closes that distance, and for those of you that have been paying attention, you'll have noticed that there's 11,960 damage down in the bottom left of this screen. Yes, what 11,960 damage in the Waffle Panzer IV? I don't think that I've ever seen a tier 9 tank destroyer get even close to this in recent times, maybe back in the day, but to see it reach over 12,000 is even more of an achievement. And don't worry, because this isn't just exclusive to this one game, and you can see the results on screen right now, but it's also capable in the next game. And this game is on Malinovka in a similar sort of matchup, playing as a top tier within the game up against quite a few more tier nines in this result and pulling off a result just as good and exactly what you want when you're seeing a tank that is supposedly, you know, just a trash tier nine tank destroyer, or at least a tank destroyer that's kind of hidden away in the background of World of Tanks that people just don't really understand is as good as it is. But hopefully you guys don't underestimate this Waffle Panzer IV like the enemy team are doing right now. And it'll be interesting to see whether or not you want to pick up this vehicle or if you've tried it out. Is it as good as these matchups are making out and the replays that we're witnessing in today's gameplay? Because at the pinnacle top level, it seems like this tank has so much potential. And when I've played it before, it's just a tank that is very versatile as a tank destroyer. And if you can use the camouflage mechanics to its top ability then this tank can somehow manage to wiggle its way out of a lot of sticky situations and come away with results that you'd only be expecting from things like the chieftain at tier 10 and yeah I mean it is unbelievable to see in this game and what's more unbelievable is the fact that 80% of you haven't yet subscribed to the channel. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's uh, it's going to be one of those cringy ones. But either way, if you haven't already uh, subscribed and you want to see more content, then please do as it helps me out. And it helps massively spread the channel to more people too. So either way, yeah, hopefully you've been enjoying the content so far, even if you don't subscribe. But the thing that I wanted to highlight in today's video is not subscribing, but... The fact that if you stay consistent and you are a super, super patient player, the Waffle Panzer IV is a rewarding vehicle to play because, you know, when you're offered up just slices of meat like the enemy team are doing right here, exposing themselves on the top of the hill, offering up their asses so you can eat them down. Yeah, I mean, who wouldn't be very pleased to see that? And you can see him just plowing round after round after round, not even getting detected yet. And this is exactly why this tank is just deadly, is because 
Um, like in the first gameplay, it's remaining undetected and plowing out this damage so consistently with great accuracy, not really missing a ton of shots, he says, as the waffle misses. But of course, yeah, I think there was a rock in between him anyway, so that was just a, a maybe not the best of aims. But either way, it doesn't matter because it's all about keeping that damage churning and keeping on pushing out that damage. And now the fact that the enemy team are within the view range of this vehicle, he's started to get spotting damage which is something that you often won't see from tanks like this because you have to a either be too far forward to spot with some of the uh, heavily armored vehicles so having that lighter camo and being a lot lower profile you can often outspot and you can even often outspot light tanks with the Waffle Panzer IV if you are, of course, sitting in a bush and you're stationary and you're not moving. Yeah, I mean, this tank is just really, really fun to play. And you can see here, even with things like the BZ being as close as he is, uh, he was able to stay undetected until he fired, which is crazy. And often you can predict with the Waffle Panzer IV when you are going to get spotted. Of course, you saw the Waffle pulling back down as soon as he fired at the BZ, uh, so he doesn't take any unnecessary damage. And unfortunately, not landing to la not managing to land that final shot into the E75 but at this point in the game much like you saw in the first replay he's going to try and come back from a awful awful position and he does that first by trying to remove the KPZ and with him and his teammate playing in the Barask they're able to do it and that means that one of the most dangerous HE spamming vehicles that has those horrible rounds that can really screw over your day when you're playing in a lightly armoured vehicle like this, uh, that means that he's able to now move forward with his game as he sees fit. But with the GSAW 1008 spotting him out in the central area, it's not looking all too good. And he's going to have to land two rounds into the GSAW to be able to remove him from the game. But having got 9,700 damage so far, and with him and his teammate only totaling 2,200 damage, with so many guns left on the enemy team still alive, it just is not looking all too good. But... What the enemy team don't realise is that letting the Waffle get away without getting uh, him taking a lot more damage than he did, only receiving one shell really, yeah, I mean, they have made a fatal mistake because when the Waffle gets re-unspotted, I guess you could call it, or unspotted, I guess, um, he's no longer going to be so easy to spot and he's going to be able to get into this bush position right here, which is great for defending anyone that's going to push the T-32 and also allows you to spot people pushing the GSAW 1008. And with the GSAW 1008 being a one-shot now, he's not able to really counter him even if uh, the GSAW does manage to spot the Waffle Panzer IV, which he may not do anyway if you're using the camo mechanics properly and you're pulling back behind the bush before you fire. So really good use of repositioning with the Waffle early enough such that you don't get spotted out in the open against all of the tanks, but only against a few of them as you're pulling back and only taking just one shell of damage. Now the G-Sword does finally get spotted and he lands a 477 damage roll, which is more than enough to remove the G-Sword from the game and sends him back to the garage where he belongs as the little tier 8 premium tank destroyer on no level of the Waffle Panzer IV and yet again reloads and finishes off the BZ-176. Another little bit of a annoying premium shall we say one of the more power creep premiums that i think wargaming have ever introduced into the game and with them getting removed he now allows him to push and advance towards his previous position where he took on this ridge line and where he's going to be hopefully able to do exactly what he did at the start and also spot for the t32 and provide some more support and you can see him now reverse side scraping exactly what you want to do with the Waffle Panzer IV when poking up a ridge line because then you can escape a lot quicker you can pull back down that ridge line much faster and that's going to allow you to avoid taking as many shells or potentially taking any shells but it's not looking too spicy at the moment shall we say because in order to find the rest of the enemy team, he's going to have to do a little bit of reconnaissance or at least push forward or hope that the enemy team decide that they're going to go for the cap or at least try and push for the enemy team. And if they do that, they're going to fail. So they're probably thinking, well, we'll let the waffle and the T-32 come to us or maybe they should pressure the cap circle. But we'll have to wait and see 
and let's join back in a second. So the Conqueror got spotted in the central location as you see on the map as along with the 703 now deciding to YOLO and unfortunately for the 703 he does get removed and now just two vehicles left on the enemy team. The Conqueror who is in the center needs to be removed because that is a very flexible position and it kind of can be annoying to dig out especially if you let him stay there and he's able to just plow a few rounds in when you're not looking and using the gun depression of the Conqueror to get the turret armor working yeah it's just going to be annoying so the Waffle understands this and he moves forward to try and take him out before he can be taken out by the Conqueror especially if it's using HE rounds and in the process he manages to spot the Progetto or what seems like the Waffle spotted the Progetto and in doing this central location he's helping his T32 be able to understand where this Progetto is if he's going to somehow just crop up or it's also finding out where the Conqueror is and with the reversing of this tank and finding out where the Conqueror is he lands one straight into the Capola weak point which is fantastic and with the accuracy of this tank you're able to do that so much more consistently and that allows him to pick up 10,700 damage so far and there's still 700 60 damage left to pick up within this game and if he can push he may even be able to pick up all of that bringing him over 11,000 damage so now he gets out spotted which is something that you never really see with the waffle panzer 4 but the projecto 66 now pushing off of the hill and ending up crashing but either way, unfortunately, he wasn't able to pick up any of the damage on that Progetto before he got taken out by himself. But either way, 11,277 damage, 12, over 12,000 in the first game. And yeah, I mean, definitely not a tank that many people realize is as good as it is. And hopefully, just hopefully, you guys don't make the same mistake that the enemy team did in this one. And hopefully you enjoyed, so make sure you subscribe and like the video if you did. And hopefully you'll join me back in the next video coming soon.